The weekend before last, I was at a woodworking show in Massachusetts, and I bought this uh, Rikon benchtop variable speed lathe from my buddy at BP Way. And I needed some place to put it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this flip top cabinet bench sort of thingy. Now, I designed the bench to hold my spindle sander and a grinder that I don't yet have for sharpening lathe tools. But of course, I didn't want to have to move the spindle sander and the grinder every time I wanted to flip the lathe over to use it. So I designed it so that stuff just pushes out of the way. Now, I went all out with this and I got some Baltic birch from our local cabinet supply company. And I cut it all out roughly to size on the back of the pickup truck and then brought it in to clean it up with the table saw and the miter saw. Now I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Unfortunately, I had some footage that was not usable. The first thing I did was build this L frame. This is where the lathe is going to sit and it's going to be the part that flips over. Now the long part in the back is meant to cover the lathe up when it's closed. And then when it's open, it keeps all the chips from flying over into my metal working area. The next thing I did was build this box that's going to house everything. Now I skipped forward on this a little bit because, let's face it, building a box is not that exciting to watch. But it fits right in nice and tight. The L, the L frame fits nice and tight into that box. And now I need to create this pivot point. Now I want it to be able to have um, that gap on the top closed. It'll make sense later in the build. So in order to do that, the hinging point or the point where the piece flips over with the lathe on it, it needs to have a little wiggle room so it can move back and forward. Now I made this about an inch and a quarter groove all the way through the side of the cabinet to hinge it, which was ended up being quite a bit more than I needed. Actually, I could have probably gotten away with just a half inch groove. To make the grooves, I drilled two holes that were three eighths of an inch. And then I just use a pencil and a ruler to draw a straight line between them and then cut them out with a jigsaw. Now, I didn't get any video of the jigsaw cutting it out, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because the blade was dull. I was too lazy to change it, and it was a pretty rough cut. But a little bit of cleaning up with the sander, and it didn't turn out too bad. So at this point, I'm going to add the 3 8 bolts that I'm using uh, to pivot that on, and then I'm just going to test it to make sure that it's going to work right before I go any further. And it did. So I could flip it over, and then I could push it in, and it would be a nice, tight, solid top all the way through. Now there was some excess space left that I wanted to utilize, so I put a three quarter inch piece in, basically in the center of the cabinet, and on the back side over there I built some shelves in there and then some doors with some Kaizen uh, foam in it so I can add for extra storage, and I'll show, the, uh, I'll show you that towards the end of the build. Now to make sure that this thing would land in its proper position whenever I opened it, I put this kind of a cantilevered piece on it. Now it acts as two handles that I can start the turning motion. I can grab that, pick it up, and turn it. And then when it, it hits the other countertop, it lands flat and keeps everything nice and secure. Now at this point, I'm adding the lathe to it. And um, I just unscrewed the top piece of plywood and then bolted the lathe down to that piece of plywood and then screwed it back down. Now I left the screws... Um, there, I didn't want to glue it at all in case I ever need to, you know, change the lathe out or work on the lathe or whatever. So at this point, it's all coming together really nicely. Now, I wanted to add that auxiliary piece to set the, uh, the angle grinder or the uh, oscillating spindle sander and the grinder that I don't yet have. Um, so I needed a way to kind of actuate that back and forth. So that way I'm not having to manually pick up the, the grinder and the oscillating spindle sander each time I want to use the lathe. So to do that, I cut into the cabinet and put a dowel, basically center mass of the part that flips, or the, if that makes sense. And that way what happens when the, the cat, when I flip the lathe over, those two are, arms are attached, this is some, the two arms are calling linkage, are attached to that sliding plate, and it pushes everything out of the way, and that's the basic gist of this build. Not an over, overly complicated build, but definitely something that was very handy and I was super excited to get done. So as I get the grinder attachment for sharpening the lathe tools, I can put that in the back there and I'll be able to easily access the lathe and the oscillating spindle sander anytime I really need to use them. So this was a really handy build.
So this is my metal working area back here. I've got my metal cutting bandsaw in front of the camera there and my chop box over here. So I figured I wanted some, you know, places here that I could put uh, oils in, in cans of WD-40 and different things that I use a lot. I haven't cut those in yet. So these doors are two and a half inches deep and they have Kaizen foam in them, which I'll eventually cut out. Now I had some extra space back underneath here for some storage and I'm keeping the chuck for the uh, four jaw chuck for the lathe back here and a few other components. So. so I didn't draw this up or make plans. I've kind of built this off the cuff and that's why this turned out a little bit sloppy. If I would have pla planned ahead for this, it would have been a lot more contained and I may eventually change this, um, but for now it's working just fine. So this linkage is just connected to a dowel I here, have here center mass and uh, it's connected to a little buildup and this pushes when I turn this uh, lathe over it just pushes everything out of the way so it's really um, not complicated so the lathe cord itself will actually go up underneath here and go through the cabinet and I'll have that on a retractable bungee cord type of thing so when I lower and raise it the cord will automatically pull through um, and the, having this shield up here it, it's actually the lathe is a 12 inch lathe and it's offset about six and a half inches so I can put uh, the you know big material on here or as big as this lathe will handle without hitting the back wall and it keeps well the hope is it'll keep some of the chips from going over into my metal working area where they'll constantly need to be cleaned up so one thing I didn't talk about in the build is that there's a locking point here and on the opposite side so if I put something in here that's off center and has some mass to it and it vibrates um, any movement will be eaten up by the locking points now in the base there's a seven inch rise so if that's not enough weight I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be but if it ends up not being enough I can put a plate underneath there and add some bricks to it and then attach all of that to the cabinet to help with any other vibration so that about wraps it up for my flip cart cabinet lathe cabinet I don't even know what to call this thing handy that's what I'm gonna call it um, I will be adding the, the grinder here for sharpening the grinding tools I've got a place here on the side for the um, mask and some other measuring tools that I'll be using on the lathe and then the lathe tools that I have will be uh, attached on the side here which I haven't gotten done yet but that's all in the works so thanks for watching I really appreciate it um, I've taken a couple of weeks off here and I usually do that right around the beginning of January but we're back at it full time so you can expect a couple videos a week from me now and I look forward to seeing you guys soon thanks for watching